Well, here in the next couple of minutes, we want to talk about protecting your skin from the sun. It is so vitally important as we live in the desert. One in five people will end up with skin cancer, and there's some great new advancements in the area of treatment. So, uh, Dr. Bottengar, um, a radiation oncologist, and patient Robert Wakefield join us to talk a little bit more about this topic. Welcome to the show, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It already smells good, so we <laughs> we've woken you up in that way. Let's um, let's talk about the importance of of really protecting our skin and really the prevalence of skin. Skin cancer, particularly in this region? Well, the prevalence of skin cancer here in this region is the highest in the United States. Mm -hmm. In America, there will be over 2 million people diagnosed with skin cancer this year. Uh, the most common types of skin cancer are basal cell and squamous cell carcinoma. There are many preventive measures that we can use, basically protecting ourselves from the sun. We can use protective clothing, wearing a hat, mm -hmm. sunblock. I would recommend sunblock with a minimum SPF of 15, waterproof, and protection against all the forms of radiation with UVA and UVB protection. I want to bring you into the conversation because you are acutely aware of this, the, these needs and the measures that should be taken with skin cancer because you had, had skin cancer. Yes, I'll, I have had skin cancer in the face. I've had it in many locations upon the body from prolonged exposures and overexposures to the sun and being a primary care practitioner, I've seen the results of other types of treatments. And so let's talk about the treatment that you were able to, um, to utilize in this. And it was really kind of state of the art, was it not? It was the cutting edge of technology and actually probably saved my cosmetic appearance. Uh, so this is the machine right here, and it, this is specifically called what, doctor? Zoft. Okay. Uh, this oh. is a a machine that delivers, administers radiation using a technique called electronic brachytherapy. And is this it? This, okay. this is the miniature high-dose x-ray source, as you can see, the size of a sewing needle. Okay. Okay, there, where we deliver, that directly applies radiation to the target. So let's say I had it on my hand. Show me how this would work. Here we have these surface applicators. And so the source is administered through these surface applicators that have a various appropriate sizes that can directly target just that surface of the skin. Okay. Protecting all the other areas surrounding that target area. So it could be very localized right to the area that we want to treat. So this would be particularly useful, um, I'm thinking, on the face because otherwise you would have to do what, cut portions of the skin and have, um, you know, scarring that, that, that that might be, you know, This is extremely, extremely advantageous for the cosmetically sensitive locations. There is really no um, scarring that results with this treatment. If you look at these before and after pictures, they're quite profound. When I see these patients in follow-up, I, I can't even recognize where the original cancer was. I have to have their pictures. So on this ear, I mean, obviously you know that that was just not supposed to be there, and you administered this, this little a localized dose of... Um, radiation right on yes, the this, cancer? Yes. This particular patient had a squamous cell carcinoma uh, of the skin involving the ear. Uh, and he received eight treatments. They were delivered twice a week, uh, very conveniently, um, and tolerated very well. And once we completed the treatment, the patient uh, tumor was completely eradicated. Oh, wow. This was on the eye. So I can see, uh, now it's really. Now I'm understanding why this is so important because of the location that you're able to, to administer the treatment. Yes. Uh, with these sensitive locations, surgery can be quite difficult and potentially disfiguring. Right. Okay. So I want to jump back to you and let's talk about your experience and where... Did you have it on your face anywhere? I had it on the upper eyelid and the right nasal uh, labial uh, aspect, which would have necessitated possibly removal of the upper eyelid using conventional uh, surgical techniques. Without the, 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 the access to this, it almost would seem that some people would avoid treatment because they would think, well, I don't want to go in and have to, you know, have a big scar on my face. It might be, a, you know, a deterrent to seeking treatment if people don't know about this technology. That's true. And with this treatment, a person is able to comfortably have treatment just a couple times a week very short period of time in their day and have no real um, 
after effects or even noticing that they've undergone any treatment. But they get health back. They get their health back and they get their cosmetic, uh, their cosmetic appearance is, is completely uh, maintained. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Really interesting stuff. We appreciate you being in here, both of you, and, and sharing your story with us. It's, it's personal Very information, and, and, and we're appreciative to learn how this can work in, in different lives of people. So we're going to have information on this treatment on SonoranLiving.com. Janine? Okay. Well, summer is meant for grilling. And a little later in the show, we're sharing more tips from the cast of the ABC show The Chew. Daphne Oz is going to share the secret to perfectly grilled corn and the additions to take it to the next level.